This is our update on the outcome of Proposition 30. Uh, yes, thank you. <coughs> thank you, President Himmelstein, Chancellor Harris, and members of the board. Uh, you know, I've had this position for about two years now, and I've had very limited opportunity to provide you with good news. Uh, so I'm, today I'm very happy to tell you that Prop 30 was indeed approved by the voters last week, as, it, as I think you uh, already know. Uh, I think uh, Member Baum alluded to this uh, in an earlier uh, item today, uh, but I think this is an issue where uh, the community colleges can really take some credit. Uh, it, looking at some of the numbers that I've seen, uh, roughly 30 percent of the electorate that turned out uh, last Tuesday were young voters, those 18 to 29 year olds. And uh, I think we can uh, look at the efforts that went on our community college campuses to register voters, to get them to turn out, to educate them on the importance of Prop 30. Uh, I, I, I think that that worked. I think you all know what happened on your campuses. And uh, I think they were really instrumental in, in uh, putting Prop 30 over the top. Uh, it looks like it got about 54% of the vote, and I uh, have to think that if we had had a turnout of young voters similar to what uh, some of the pollsters have predi predicted, uh, we might have had a very different outcome. So uh, all credit to our campuses for that. I think we should be proud of that. Um, uh, as I alluded to a little bit earlier today in our item about the FON, uh, I, what I hope Prop 30 does is uh, avoid some of the worst uh, uh, outcomes that we might have uh, otherwise have had. If 30 had failed, uh, we would have had no new money uh, in the 2012 budget. We would have had trigger reductions uh, of about $338 million. That would have been another 7.3% uh, roughly in uh, additional workload reductions on top of those that we've suffered uh, in recent years. Uh, Prop 30 gives us about $210 million in new money but only 50 million of that really goes into program. That's about $50 million for uh, uh, growth, or uh, as I prefer to call it, restoration of the uh, workload reductions we've suffered uh, in recent years. The remaining $160 million goes to deferral buy down, which may ease some borrowing costs for our districts, but does not add, allow them to add uh, new program. Uh, so th the, the way I, I, I term it, that this is still not a very robust year for us. Um, uh, what I hope it does is stabilize the budget for this year and an ongoing year such that we can look forward to uh, at least modest increases going forward. Uh, my hope is that we can now uh, stamp our feet a bit and feel the bottom and uh, hope that we're, we can start getting a reversal of our uh, recent bad fortune. Um, a few details about how Prop 30 does work. Uh, the dollars are appropriated outside the normal budget process. Uh, they, uh, the what Prop 30 does is it increases a new account within the general fund that um, uh, uh, provides percentages of those new higher revenues will go to uh, either K-12 or to community college by our 11% share. So uh, for this year, since the, uh, the, the passage of the tax doesn't automatically put revenues uh, into the treasury, uh, we will not get our share of those Prop 30 dollars until June. Uh, as I think as I mentioned earlier today, that indicates that about 40% of our general fund for this year does not arrive for, to our districts until June. Mm. And again, that is another thing to keep in mind is that that is an estimate. They're looking at the projected percentage <coughs> of what will come in and uh, uh, estimating what that will be for us. So we have to be uh, on our toes a bit to, uh, uh, to ensure that those, uh, those revenues come in as, as projected. Uh, in subsequent years, the dollars from those higher taxes will be apportioned to districts on a quarterly basis. Finance has to estimate each year uh, what will come in from that, and uh, we will, uh, on a quarterly basis, give districts 25% of that as the year uh, goes on. Uh, there are, uh, well, let me first uh, talk about what, what can we expect in future years. Uh, certainly predicting Prop 98 in the long term is, uh, is, is a uh, risky, uh, endeavor. Uh, it's very sensitive to the uh, uh, to the performance of our high income earners to uh, per capita income. Uh, so uh, long range estimates for Prop 98 are often written in sand. Uh, but as of the the passage of the uh, the budget in July, the Department of Finance projected that if Prop 30 passed, we could look forward to uh, Prop 98 growth of about 16 to 17 billion dollars over the four years, starting with the 2013 year. Looking at our 11% share of that, that would suggest that we can expect uh, annual increases on the uh, that would average about four or $500 million a year. 
So uh, I would, in light of the reductions we've had in recent years, I would not consider that robust uh, growth, uh, but it's certainly uh, a step in the, in the right direction. Um, some special conditions of the dollars we receive through uh, Prop 30. Uh, it is characterized as general purpose money uh, and finds that the district has sole authority to determine how the monies received from that education protection account are spent. Uh, but it does also prohibit the use of those dollars to for administrative compensation or costs. Uh, it does not go into great detail on how we define administrative costs, so I think that is something that our uh, fiscal standards team will, will take a look at when they meet again in December just to provide a little guidance uh, for our districts. Um, some other drawbacks, uh, I think, of Prop 30, and again, we're, we're grateful we have the money. I'd rather have complicated money than, than no money. Uh, but that it, districts need to be aware that this is time limited. Uh, the, the, the sales taxes are increased from January 1st of this coming year, uh, only lasts for four years. The higher income taxes are retroactive to January 1 of 2012. They end in uh, 2018. So the dollars that we receive from Prop 30 will begin to uh, trickle down as of the 17-18 year, and they will be gone in 1920. So districts have to understand even looking <coughs> forward that there is there is a cliff out there, and uh, they have to be very prudent, I think, in how they budget these dollars. Uh, so they, they have to prepare for that uh, down the line. Uh, I, I would suggest that if districts have uh, ongoing issues in the budgets right now, shortages, that they use that dollars first to, to shore up those problems before they take on long-term obligations that may uh, get them into trouble uh, down the road. Uh, but overall, I, I think this is obviously very, very good news for the system. I think it signals the public support and desire to, to reinvest in higher education. Uh, and I think that's uh, uh, this board, of course, uh, uh, endorsed the measure at the last meeting. I think we can take some, some pride in that and some pride in uh, contributing to a success on Election Day. And uh, with that, I conclude my report and be happy to take any questions. Member Reed. Aside from Prop 30, what numbers are you seeing from the revenue growth or, or not as far as the, the state's general fund goes? Are, are you hearing, are we improving? Or, are, are we addressing some of our de other deficit issues? Well, uh, you know, the LAO has their uh, November forecast coming out likely uh, later this week. So I think we'll have a better uh, read at that time on, on what, uh, how, how the revenues are otherwise looking. So uh, right now I don't have uh, great information on that. Uh, I think it's fair to say that the economy has grown, if anything, a little bit faster uh, than uh, some, some had hoped. I think we're seeing growth for the past year a little over 2%, which again is not, not by any means uh, great growth, but we do seem to be going in, in the right direction. And uh, some of the job reports, particularly for California, have been, have been fairly positive, other than the, the public sector, the private sector job growth has been reasonably good. So hopefully that uh, foretells uh, reasonably good news going forward. Thank you. Member Baum. Uh, forgive me if you said this already. How's the uh, growth funding going to be allocated that uh, came with Prop 30? Uh, as you know, we've had a couple of years uh, in recent years where we've had workload reductions. Uh, so going back to the 2009-10 uh, year, uh, we, were, we were able to restore some of the reductions we took that year in 2010 because there was a little bit of growth funding there. So our, our intent with this uh, $50 million is to continue the restoration of the 910 growth. So if, assuming districts have the, have, they have to earn it, of course, they have to have the FPS to, to get those dollars back. But the first call on those dollars will be to restore uh, what's left over from the 2009-10 reduction. That's good to know. And then um, again, just to restate, Prop 30 doesn't, isn't going to provide added revenue or, or added funding for the system. It's just going to prevent deeper cuts to the system. Correct. The 12-13 budget assumed passage of Prop 30. So this is not really, uh, uh, I, I wouldn't necessarily call it new money. It just keeps us where the budget was supposed to uh, have us in July. Chancellor Harris. You know, one of the things I think it's important for the uh, board to remember when we talk about the $50 million, and that is uh, as uh, Vice Chancellor Tory mentioned, we, we've seen a shrinkage of about a half a million students in this system over the last four or five years. So the term growth is really a misnomer. Yeah. 
This really is uh, access restoration, and um, it will serve, we believe, about 20,000 students statewide. Uh, if you look at uh, uh, Vice Chancellor Troy's uh, uh, projections for the next four years, uh, we, we probably will not be able to restore the access we've denied Californians even in the next four years, especially considering we have multiple uh, priorities. But I, I think those of us in, in the field need to be careful when we use that term growth because I do believe that that's a misnomer. We uh, shut the doors in a lot of students' faces <coughs> and we're only beginning to open it back up a crack. Well, uh, I'd know, just to add to Chancellor Please. Harris's point, uh, even with the $50 million in this growth or restoration, as however you prefer to call it, we still have about $400 million in outstanding workload reductions uh, that have uh, that have are unmet at this time. Uh, Vice President uh, Baca, we have some public comment. Yeah, President Amelstein, we have two uh, people wishing to address agenda item 4.3. Uh, before I call you up, uh, uh, just a reminder, public testimony will be invited after committee discussion on each item. Speakers are limited to three minutes each. And I have uh, Will, uh, Will Bruce from the EOPS Association. President Hamelstein, um, Chancellor Bryce Harris, uh, members of the board. Congratulations to all of us, especially this board who officially backed uh, Prop 30 at the September uh, Board of Governors meeting in San Diego. With the passage of Prop 30, the, the voters sent a clear message that the value of education in California needs to be protected and funded. And now that it has passed, we must make sure that no cuts to education and restoration of programs will be the system number one priority as we move forward. All of us stuck our necks out on the line as all of the groups supported Prop 30 and without any one group, especially our students, the proposition could have failed. It's up to us, all of us, to make sure that the legislators do now do what is right to protect education and not cut us when they're looking to balance the budget in this year and the future years. The Extended Opportunities Programs and Services Association would also like to welcome Dr. Bryce Harris as the new chancellor for the C California Community College System. From his past work experience and testimony from uh, those from the field that work directly from with him indicates that he is a champion of student success. We will look forward to the opportunity of collaborating with him to ensure the success for all students in the community college system. A as we talk and move forward with this idea of student success, I would like to, uh, for all of you, to once again adorn your walls with our annual stu student scholarship and student success calendars. I brought, I brought some for you over here and I was gonna have them passed out. Um, uh, I wanna remind you that uh, w w when you look at these stories in the calendar this year, we'd like to remind you how successful the EOPS program has always been at leveling the playing field for those most disadvantaged students of the community college system and help create the successes you will see in our calendars just a snapshot of their entire EOPS population. Student success is EOPS. Scott Hamilton, uh, California Association of Post-Secondary Education and Disability. Good morning. Good morning. We're not quite as formal as everybody else, so I'll say, hi Bryce, I hope your, uh, your first week's going well. I am Scott Hamilton from, uh, we call it KPED. Uh, it's the professional organization for DSPS, <laughs> Disability Services, staff, students, administrators, throughout all three systems, not just community colleges. But uh, uh, similar to, to what Will said, I want to say good for us. I think we dodged a bit of a bullet, but as Dan said, it's, it's not, uh, it's only a, a time limited thing. So. Uh, I want to just remind everyone uh, of a few facts about students with disabilities in our system. Um, the DSPS funding has taken a 40% cut, uh, not the roughly 12% cut that the system has had overall. Um, but at the same time, DSPS numbers have gone up uh, since our peak in funding for both the system and DSPS in 08, 09, um, we've, we've gone up over 5% in the number of DSPS students we serve. 
while the system, when you count non-DSPS students, has gone down 17%. So we've had a 40% cut in funding with an increase in students because we can't turn students away. It's, it's a, it, we have to accept any eligible student and provide them equal access. So all I'm saying is just remember as we talk about budget, Prop 30 money, any other money, that, that you continue to do what you've done the last two years, which is make restoration of categorical funding a top budget priority in the state budget. Thank you. Okay, uh, board members, any other comments?